if the machine has been sitting idle for a while, it's going to pop up with this sort of screen saver. I'm just going to touch the screen. And this is the idle screen you'll see the first time the printer boots up. So we see three notifications. You always want to check these if you're ready to print, if you see one of these, so you can just press that. And we see the notifications are simply select a job, load material, and load support material. These are all the things we need to do before we can actually print a part. So we're going to close that and we'll go through the menu here. On the left hand side, we're actually in the home menu right now. So this is where we can either load a file from a USB stick or there's actually internal files built in. You need to know which material you have loaded. So if you wanted to print this demo camera shroud, it shows you right here that that requires ASA versus PLA versus ABS, which are the only three materials that are available in the um, F-170. There's also TPU. That requires a separate head, which is not included by default, but it can be purchased separately, and that'll allow you to print a TPU part. So we'll go back here and back, back one more time. We're back out of the idle screen. If we send a part over the network, you'll see it sitting here ready to print. And then this would be the queue, so we would see a bunch of different parts in the queue ready to print. And we can add a part in the top right corner, again, either via USB or internal storage to the queue as well. We don't have anything in the queue because we're not ready to print. This is our material screen. This is where we load and unload material, which we'll get to next. And then th these are our tools. We have our settings, so you can turn your camera, Wi-Fi on and off. There's some other settings in here you might want to change. Now, one thing I'd like to point out is the way that you scroll on the screen. It works a little bit differently than your smartphone. You can't just kind of flick it and expect it to work. You'll, you'll end up pressing buttons and things and you'll be a little bit confused. The best way to scroll on the screen is to just press and hold your finger down and move up and down until you get to the selection you want. And then you'll press down on that selection. So we'll get back out. This is our calibration screen. So you can see the tips are calibrated. This would have been done at the factory, although I like to check it on installation to make sure nothing has happened during shipping. And then touch screen calibration. So if you if you notice, it's hard to see on the camera, but when I touch and pull my finger away, you see a little orange spot. That is indicating where the screen is detecting your press. So if you press here and you see an orange spot there, you probably need to calibrate your touch screen. At this point, you would follow this, these prompts to do that. Over here, we've got our gantry so if I press this I can actually move the gantry up and down manually which I've just done and this is useful for cleaning out the bottom of the build chamber as you print you're gonna have stuff down there that you need to get out so you can come in here and raise the gantry to move it um, we have our chamber temperature so it's showing that we're actually at 81 degrees and the set point's 80, so we're up the temperature for idle. And then with this update software, this is important because we always want to make sure our software is, uh, we're running the latest version of the firmware. There's always fixes and updates and they're optimizing things that the printer is doing, so we want to go online and, and download the latest version. If we connect this printer over our network to the computer, the computer will look at the firmware version and then check its server to see what the latest is and prompt you to update it but if you don't have this on the network you need to do this manually so the best way to figure this out is to come to this screen and see which version of the firmware you're running we're running version 2.1 build 5630 which i know is the latest version right now you can check that by going to support.stratasys.com and then you'll browse to your printer's page and then you're going to look at printer software and see what the latest version listed on that page is if you don't have this connected to the network you need to update your firmware manually we're going to look what the firmware version is, go to support.stratus.com, download the latest for firmware, put it on a USB stick, plug the USB stick into the front of the printer, and then you're gonna scroll down to USB tools, press USB tools, and then you'll press UPG install. Now with the USB inserted, which I don't have right now, we would press USB, and then it's gonna look on your USB drive and either show you the folders or just show you the UPG file. If that's the only thing on here, we would select it and we would install it. But we're up to date right now, so we don't need to do that. It also is gonna show you your serial number, show you your build time. So we have 10 hours and 26 minutes. That's because they test these in the factory before they send them out. Now, this symbol right here looks like a Wi-Fi logo. This is actually the networking logo. So if I press that, now we can see the connection type is wired. If I press wired, then I can have the option for wireless, which is grayed out right now on this because I do not have the, there's a, there's a USB stick you can get that you plug into the back of the printer that's a Wi-Fi stick that enables the wireless option, but it's not, it doesn't ship with the printer. So the only option we have is wired for this printer. Network mode is dynamic. We can change that to static. Depending on your 
IT department's policies, you may need to set the static or dynamic. Um, then you see the IP address. We don't have one right now because we're not plugged into the network. And then we have our MAC address. So in some cases, you need to provide your MAC address to your IT department, and then they will assign an IP address to the printer. Once the printer's then plugged into the network, it's gonna see this MAC address, the server will, and it will assign the printer dynamically an IP address based on the reservation. So again, this is all up to how your IT department does it, but these are where you find these things if they ask for them. We have the ability to restart the printer from the screen or shut it down. We can also shut it down by holding the power button in here for five seconds and it'll shut the printer off. And then we can turn the chamber fan on and off, chamber light on and off with this button right here. So those are all the options. And the next step is going to be to load material.